And good afternoon to all of our viewers. Another rendition of the BMH Virtual Event Space. We have Jared Platt back. Jared, welcome. Thank you. Good to have you. Good to see you. I know we're in for another exciting uh, webinar here. And today we're talking mobile photography. So we're going to be talking about uh, taking pictures on your phone and editing pictures on your phone. So it's pretty cut and dry. I mean, nothing really, there's, there's no great science to it, but there's a lot to know and a lot to learn. So Jared, I will uh, kick it over to you. What's going on, man? Well, uh, I am super excited about this topic because this topic is, you know that old saying, the best camera is the one that's in your hand or in your pocket or the one that you have with you. Um, the fact that I always have a camera with me and my phone is a, has, has changed everything about the way I location scout, about the way I make photographs. Like it, is, it really has changed everything. But more importantly is not just, I mean, obviously we all have cameras in our pockets now, but the question is uh, inside of your, you have a lens on your phone, but do you have a really good camera? in your phone. And I remember back several years ago, many, many years ago, um, as iPhones were first coming out, I would buy or download every camera app that I could find for the phone. And I was always, they were always shooting JPEG and they were fairly limited. They weren't, you couldn't control them very well. Um, and I kept doing it. And I, I probably, you know, you can go through your history and see what apps you've purchased. I probably have 30, 40 cameras that I've downloaded at some point for my phone, always hoping there would be a good one. And, uh, and I found some good ones along the way, but now I have a camera in Lightroom. So Lightroom itself is on your phone. It's not just a desktop application. It's also an application on any mobile device, iPad, iPhone, uh, uh, Android, any kind of phone also has uh, Lightroom on it. So anything that I have in Lightroom, I can share to my phone. Anything I take on my phone, I can share back um, to the ecosystem. So Lightroom is, a, is an ecosystem. And I'm gonna show that a little bit today. Um, we're gonna work on an iPad, we're gonna work on the desktop computer, and we're gonna work on the phone. And they're, they're all simultaneously updating each other. And the beauty of this is that not only can I take photos on a really incredible uh, camera on my phone, which is inside of the Lightroom application itself, but I can also edit those images right on the phone, or I can edit them on my iPad later, or at, you know, right after I've taken it, or I can go back to my computer and edit those photos there because they're everywhere. It synchronizes everything everywhere you want to be. And, and not only can I do that with camera phone photos that I've taken, um, but I can also do that with my, uh, my real camera. So if I'm traveling and I'm taking photographs with my camera, I can also plug those directly into my iPad or into my iPhone just with a little dongle. Um, or if I happen to be doing a big job or I'm traveling for a long time, I'll put them in my, this, this is a Narbox, which is a one terabyte hard drive that has a Wi-Fi signal on it. So I can just put them inside my Narbox. And once I've got them in there, I've got a backup copy. I have the copy on the camera card itself. I have a backup copy inside of a solid state hard drive that has a Wi-Fi attached to it. And then I can bring them into my iPad or into my iPhone and I can work on them there from Lightroom and they're immediately being shared to the cloud and the cloud is then sharing them back to my studio. Um, so they're downloading onto my, uh, my computer at home or they're also downloading to my iPad. They're also in the cloud in their high full resolution. So Lightroom mobile, the, the Lightroom application itself is is an incredible ecosystem that also has a camera attached to it and so we're going to kind of go through all of that today but it's a pretty exciting world that we live in now because it has opened us up to 
a much easier way to travel, a much easier way to organize and find our images. Um, so when I travel now, instead of taking a laptop with me and a whole bunch of hard drives, I simply take my phone, which is in my pocket. I have my iPad, which fits in the kind of the back pocket of my, um, my camera bag. I take my camera. I take a little dongle that I can plug my camera cards into. And then I take my NAR box. And with all of that, which all fits right in my bag, I don't have to carry an extra satchel for my uh, computer. I don't have to carry a whole bunch of hard drives with me. All of it fits right inside my camera bag. And I can travel anywhere and photograph anything, weddings, uh, portraits, travel photography, and it is completely backed up. Not only am I backed up on a solid state hard drive, I'm backed up inside my iPad and it's backed up to the cloud and then it's brought back home to my computer and it's downloading at my computer. So this, this concept of a ecosystem for your photography is so important and so crucial to being protected against loss. Um, but more importantly, it's about being able to work with your photos whenever you feel like it. And I can't tell you how many times I have been waiting somewhere. Maybe I'm waiting on a kid uh, at school or I'm delivering them to some swim meet and there's an hour before they even start the swim meet. And I can pull out my iPad or even pull out my phone and start working on photos and I can share them. I can put them on Instagram. I can organize them. I can edit images. I can uh, even go into Photoshop on my iPad and work on images and it's all ever present. Anywhere I happen to be, if creativity strikes, I can, I can do something with it. So it's a fantastic system. We're going to go through it right now. So let's start by talking about the concept of basic, the Lightroom um, ecosystem. So the first thing you have to understand is that no matter where you, the, the image originates, if the image originates in the camera on your phone, great. If it originates on your iPad because you've placed a dongle in the iPad and you're drawing them off of a camera, great. Um, it doesn't matter. Even if it originated on a camera and you went home and put it into your computer and brought it into Lightroom, and we're going to be talking about Lightroom Desktop, not Lightroom Classic. Lightroom Classic is a whole nother realm. It's a much more uh, complicated program. Uh, we're not going to talk about that today. We're talking about Lightroom Desktop for your uh, computer. It's, a, it's the newer version of Lightroom. Um, we're talking about Lightroom on an iPad, Lightroom on an iPhone, and also any Android devices you happen to be using. So if you put an image into Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic. We Again, dismiss Lightroom Classic. We're not even talking about it today. So just put that out of your mind. Lightroom Classic is kind of the, the hardcore professional, lots of things going on. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, it's the workhorse of uh, photography. But we're talking about Lightroom itself. And that it's kind of a confusing name, but Adobe Lightroom, which is the modern new version of Lightroom. Um, the one that just says Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic. Okay, so no matter where your images originate inside of Lightroom, whether they're coming from a camera or whether they're coming from the actual phone as a camera directly into Lightroom, they all immediately get sent to the cloud in high resolution. And then once they're in the cloud in high resolution, the cloud then can share them back out to all of your other devices. Now there are some settings that you want to go through when you're inside of Lightroom. So in Lightroom itself, you're going to go to the top right hand corner and you're going to look at the settings menu. And in the settings menu, there are certain things that you need to know about. First off, cloud storage and sync is a big one. 
the first thing you need to decide is whether or not you're going to use cellular data. So if you have an unlimited cellular data plan or you don't use a lot of data in transferring photography, fine. But if you're uploading, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of photos, you might want to turn that off so that you can just be on Wi-Fi when you do that. Um, but if you have an unlimited plan and you're good with that, then leave it on because it makes life easier. Now, you can also turn on this option here, which says only download smart previews. So you can upload the full raw file to the cloud, but then all of your other devices in order to save space can simply download a smart preview so that they can still work on the image, they can still adjust it, they can still even share the image, but it only brings a small version of that raw image down instead of the entire full file. So you can leave that on or off uh, either way. Um, <clears throat> another thing that you want to look at is the import dialog box. So inside of import, you're going to see that you can import photos, screenshots, which I always leave off because I hate getting screenshots of, you know, what, whatever bank data or something that I don't want those to come in. So we don't import screenshots. We can also import videos. You can also add your copyright so that any image that comes in is going to get your copyright on it. And then this is my new favorite thing right here. It's the camera settings, raw defaults. Now, if you're a Lightroom Classic user, you're probably used to this. You have the ability as you imported images to apply certain things to those images. Well, you can do that inside of Lightroom now on your iPhone, on your iPad. Right now I'm working on the iPad just because it's bigger, it's easier to work with. Um, I'm gonna click on the camera settings here and it's gonna drop down. I can apply Adobe defaults, which means Adobe's just gonna decide what to do to the image based on what they know about the camera. Or I can say camera settings and this is a really cool addition because now, you know how uh, you have camera settings on your camera like uh, on, on a Canon, you might choose landscape or maybe on your Nikon, you might choose the portrait mode or something like that. And it's, and it's adding a style to the JPEG that you see on the back of your screen on your camera. Well, in the past, when you brought those into Lightroom, it would then convert back to the original raw image. So you'd see this beautiful image that you saw on the back of your camera and then it would go bloop, and it'd turn back to the original raw data, which always looks a little bit thin, always looks a little bit dingy because it has a lot more latitude. Well, if you turn on this camera settings option, what will happen is if, if Lightroom actually has the data on your camera, and that just depends on which camera you're using, it will take the information about that. Say you had it in landscape mode when you took the picture, then Lightroom is going to apply Adobe's version of that landscape mode. So they've kind of reverse engineered and it's gonna apply that setting on the way in so that your raw image looks a little bit more like what you saw on the back of your camera. So that's really cool. The other thing that you can do is you can choose a preset. So when you choose a preset, you can go through a list of all of your presets that you have inside of Lightroom. And one of those presets. Uh, you, can, you can use black and white, you can use creative, color. Uh, you notice that I've got a bunch in there. Um, but you can also, uh, if we have them turned on, and unfortunately I don't have them turned on right now, so I'm going to have to uh, show you that in a second. Um, but you can also, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go back and turn them on. Hold on. Let's go back and turn them on. So if I'm looking at an image, and I want to look at my presets. That's this little button right below my main settings. There's another button here that looks like two little circles over each other. That's where your presets are. And inside of your presets, you have a whole bunch of different presets, but you can also manage those presets. So this little dot, dot, dot up in the top right-hand corner allows you to manage. And you can see that there are some that I had turned off and we're gonna turn defaults back on, um, turn optics on, 
Uh, I, the legacy ones I don't like very much. They just get in the way. So I can turn on and off all of the presets that I have in there just so that I can save space and I'm not scrolling through quite so many. Um, so now that I've done that, let's go back to our settings and go back to import. And you can see now when I go in to choose presets, now I can go to the defaults and this is really cool because I can apply defaults that will apply Adobe Landscape plus lens correction or plus lens correction and noise reduction. So if you use those defaults there, you can actually tell it, I want to apply an automatic lens correction to every image that comes in. You can also create your own presets and so any preset you have, if you want all of your images to be black and white when they come in and use a very specific black and white preset, you can do that too. So that's a really cool new setting that's inside of Lightroom uh, as of the summer. So um, anyway, it's important to understand how to import images. So the first thing that we do when we want to import an image is we go down to, and, and Lightroom is, it's collected based on uh, what we call albums. And if you're, if you're used to Lightroom Classic, those were, they were called collections. But all images are gonna go into one big pot inside of the Lightroom ecosystem. And it's divided up, the way you find images is that you find them here on the left-hand side. And you can look at all your photos. You can look at just photos that came from a Lightroom camera, those that are recently added, those were recently edited, people, deleted images, which is cool because it keeps all of your deleted for about a month so that you don't accidentally delete something. You can also choose uh, to look at them based on date, but also you can organize them based on the way you wanna use them, which would be in folders and then in albums. So right now we're looking at an album called B&H Landscapes, okay? So, you're gonna choose or create, and you can create just by clicking a little plus button up here and creating a new album or a new folder. Um, but you're going to choose a specific uh, folder, an album, and you're going to, once you're in it, then over here on the left-hand side is a either a camera or a plus button. And we're gonna click the plus button, and we're gonna actually add those images from either our photos, or from a camera roll, or from files. Now, the I'm not really all that adept at um, Samsungs and you know all the Android devices, um, but on on Apple for the longest time we didn't have like a hard drive in here that we could go into, whereas the Androids I think always did. Um, but now we have the ability to do it from files, which means that we can actually dig into the hard drive on our iPad or on our iPhone and look at things. Plus, if you go from files, not only can you look at the files that are on your iPad, but you can also browse images that are on a Wi-Fi device like this uh, Narbox. So that's how we import images in. So when I browse and I say on my iPad and I wanna look at photos, I have a bunch of photos here that I want to import. So I'm just going to hit select and I'm going to select those images. And then once I've selected, I hit done. Oops, sorry. I need to select those images. And then once I've selected those images, I'm gonna hit open. And those images are going to come in to Lightroom and you'll notice that they're coming in right into this collection. So there, are, it, again, Lightroom brings them all into one big pot, um, but it's also putting them into this album so that we can look at those and play with those images specifically. So that's the first way that we can get images into Lightroom, uh, which is whether it's coming from your camera, whether it's coming from a card that you've plugged into the iPhone, whether you're looking at a NAR box on Wi-Fi, um, it doesn't matter. You're just importing them into the ecosystem. And at this point, 
Lightroom is actually sending them to the cloud so that they're completely backed up. The full raw image is not only here on the iPad, but it's gonna be in the cloud, and then it's going to be available also on my desktop and on my phone. Okay, so any questions about that before we go to the camera itself? Jared, there's nope. no questions on that. I don't know if you want to just address this real quick right now. We just had a question regarding uh, screen calibration. So if you're going from, in talking about mm -hmm. the ecosystem and going from one device to another, is that an issue, um, you know, maybe going from an iPad to a MacBook? Uh, yes, and that's a really great question. So how do we, as a, as a professional photographer, it's very important that I, that I have screen calibration. Um, and so when I'm working on my photos on an iPhone or an iPad, I'm seeing it as a sketch. I'm working on it as a sketch and I'm, it, it's, they're pretty accurate. iPhones and iPads are pretty accurate things. They're a little too contrasty and a little too bright. So they look maybe a little better than they actually are. Um, and if I'm sharing from, let's say I went out in the field and I was taking a picture with the Fuji and then I put it into my iPhone and then I shared it directly from my iPhone to Instagram. I'm not worried that that image is going to look bad because everybody else is looking at it on an iPhone or an Android or something like that, that has that same glossy bright screen. What I'm concerned about is when I take that image into a print, is it going to look right? If I send it to a client, are they going to print it right? So what I do is I do my sketching. I make it look as good as I can on my iPad and on my iPhone. And then I send it. Obviously, it's already on my, uh, my laptop back at home. I've got a calibrated screen right here. And so I can simply go back to, so let's go. So here we are inside of Lightroom desktop. So this is on my desktop computer and I'm here. I'm going to go look at these landscapes and there are the photos that I just put into my iPad. They are on my desktop computer now. And so I can look at them and I know what they, what this looks like is correct. I know that it's calibrated. I know that when I print, it's going to print exactly what I see here. So, so you kind of have to look at these as sketch places because you can't 100% guarantee that the color and the brightness and the contrast are going to be perfectly accurate for print. But if you're sending it out to the world and they're going to be consuming it on similar devices, then you don't have to worry about it because these are really tightly controlled, especially Apple products. Their, their color management is very tightly controlled. And so I've never worried about sending it out for, you know, Instagram or something like that, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's talk about the camera itself. So I'm gonna switch over to the camera so that you can see my camera. So you're gonna see whatever my camera sees, and then I'm gonna run over to the other side of my office here. So let me make sure that this is running. Yep, it is. All right. So let's go over to the other side of the office space here. All right, here we go. So what I've done here is I, I've got a light over here and I'm, I'm just using a little snoot. So this is a pro photo light, but it's also got a constant light source on it. And I'm using a little snoot to give me some light here and I'm going to show you the camera. Now the, the Lightroom camera itself, you activate it, let's just go back. So if you're looking at any collection, it doesn't matter where you are inside of Lightroom, as long as you're inside of a collection of some sort, you will actually see the uh, Lightroom camera and the plus button right at the bottom. And let me quickly turn on my touch so that you can see where I am. Okay, so you can see right down here at the bottom, there is a camera and I'm going to click on that camera and now I'm entering into the Lightroom camera. Now incidentally if you swipe over to the right so I'm looking at my phone right now if I swipe to the right I can use the Lightroom camera uh, I can get right to the Lightroom camera just by swiping right so I swipe right 
and then I can either take a selfie, I can take a camera photo, or I can go to the last photo that I took. So it's gonna show me the last photo I took. So I'm gonna click on camera and it's gonna take me right to the camera itself. Now, inside of the camera, there's a whole bunch of different settings. So the first setting here, if I, if I just go to automatic, this is what I get. I have auto, I have a trigger, and then right over on the right hand side of the trigger, I actually have either the telephoto or the wide lens because this camera itself has, a, uh, it has two lenses to it. So generally speaking, I prefer the telephoto lens um, to the wide angle because really the telephoto is actually normal. It's, it's more like a 50 millimeter or something like that. And so I'm gonna click on the telephoto and then I can hold and that gives me the focus on that front picture. And then I can click on the little lock button and that locks everything so that the exposure is locked. So I'm not changing my exposure constantly. And then I can also click on the little, the two rings over on the right hand side. And that gives me the ability to set some various types of, uh, well, that one's good because it's kind of sepia-ish anyway. So let's go with that sepia, that warm kind of look. Um, and, and the great thing about this is that if you look up in the top, very middle, it says DNG. If I click on that, I can change that to JPEG, but the DNG is a raw file format, which means that any of the decisions I make about the color and the temperature and things like that, I can totally change later because it's a raw image. So I'm shooting raw and I'm going to photograph these guys with that kind of weird warm tone look. And I really like these two photos down here in the bottom. So that's what I'm really focusing on. I would do this as a horizontal, but uh, you guys wouldn't see it horizontal. And so I'm just doing a vertical instead. So I am going to take a picture with the auto and that's it, I've got my picture. Now I can review the picture really quickly just by clicking on the picture itself, take a look at it, and then back to the camera. Then I'm gonna go from auto to professional, and this is where things get really cool. So in professional, I have the ability to change my exposure to exactly what I want it to be. I can change my, um, if I double click that, it'll go back to the, normal. I can change my white balance. Um, I can change everything about this photo based on exposure, uh, the seconds, like I can change whether or not it's a long shutter or a, a fast shutter, my ISO settings. Um, all of those settings are able to be changed once I unlock this. So that, see how I had locked? So I'm unlocking it. Let me go back to telephoto. And then I'm going to change my, so right now it's at a thousandth of a second. Now it's at a two hundredth of a second. And then I can change my ISO and I can adjust my ISO until I like the ISO. And then I can go into the white balance and I can change my white balance so that it is daylight balanced or tungsten balanced. Um, or I can click on that little dropper and then I can go in and find something that's white. And there we have, there's the perfect white balance. See that? So that was really easy to find that white balance. And then I can even do manual exposure as well, which I don't really need to because I can just touch here. But you see, if I hold it, I can see the green lines tell me what is really in focus. So now that I've got things set up the way I want it, I'm going to take my picture and I could lock that exposure and, and, and just leave it that way. Okay, so now we go to high dynamic range. The high dynamic range is literally for, you know, sunset pictures and bright open, you know, when there's a lot of bright light. We're not in a situation where we need an HDR, um, but it simply does things fairly automatically. The only controls you have is the exposure control um, and the white balance control and your focus. Um, and it does the rest and takes a couple pictures and then it saves two. It saves the original and then it saves the HDR version of that 
shot. So you have an HDR option. You have a long exposure option. That's if you can, if you have a tripod or something like that that you can set this on, um, or you want to get a lot of motion, uh, you have a long exposure option, and then you also have depth capture. Now, depth capture only works if you have two lenses on your camera, and it allows you to later on, if you go into Lightroom Classic, you can actually um, change things based on the depth information that those two lenses captured. Um, and that's what depth capture is about. I never use depth capture because it actually doesn't even take a DNG. It takes a, uh, the, the newer form of a JPEG. So it's, it's uh, HEIC. -E so I, I, d I don't even work with the depth capture. Um, so that is the camera itself. Now, inside the camera, there are a couple other little things to notice. One of them is the three dots up on the top right-hand corner. Those allow you to change your aspect ratio. You can change your timer. You can change the grid. And you can even get a, um, a really cool haptic leveling system so that it, it it, you can feel it, it pops the, the actual um, camera, so you can feel when you're level. Um, and then also you have, uh, you can show your, highlight and your highlights and your clipping. Um, and you can also go into the gearbox and you can tell it to geotag the photos, you can tell it to save the uh, original uncompressed uh, image, and you can also tell it to always have your uh, screen at its brightest when you're taking a picture. And so those are some of the controls you have inside of this amazing little camera that also, and we're going to go back now to the desk. So let me quickly spin around here again. So those are the controls you have in that amazing little camera. Um, anytime I am taking pictures, there's basically there are two cameras I use the camera that's resident on, on the, the iPhone. And that's when I just quickly need to take a picture of something and it's not important, it's just a silly little thing or whatever. But if I'm taking a picture of something that is beautiful or that I'm interested in keeping and using professionally, or I want a really high quality version of that, that's when I go into, um, into Lightroom and use the Lightroom camera because the Lightroom camera is worlds above any other camera that I've ever used. So um, uh, any other iPhone camera that I've ever used. So that's a fantastic way to capture and that brings your images right in to the Lightroom experience. Okay, any questions about that? No, sir. All right, well, let's move on then. Let's start editing some photos. Um, I am going to go to a photo here. So notice that I'm just, I can go, oh, before we go into editing photos, let me, let me show you the value of shooting in a raw DNG with the iPhone. And this is actually shot with like an iPhone six or something like that. So it's, it's a much older iPhone, but you can see that I'm, I'm, I, this was at Adobe max several years back. And you can see that it's, it's quite a dark situation. I took a picture with the raw uh, DNG inside of the Lightroom camera. But I want you to see what can happen with a raw image. First off, because we have the ability to play with the color, I can actually get the color back to what it actually was. So as I zoom in, do you see how I've got much more uh, better information on the, on the, on the singer? Like it's, it's more realistic. I can play around with the saturation of that color a little bit better. And I don't get that typical JPEG blossoming ugliness that happens because I've, it's, it's raw. Plus I can go into the light area and I can pull the contrast down just a bit so that it's not quite so uh, vibrant and contrasty. I can take my highlights down a little bit so that I get a little bit more information in those, in those highlights. I can take the shadows up just a little bit and I can go into the effects and I can increase the clarity and even the texture a little bit so that I see that I get a lot more information out of that photograph because 
it's a raw image. So that's the value of working inside of raw. Um, well, let's go to some images that, um, well, let's, let's actually go to some iPhone images. So these are images that were shot with the iPhone. In fact, this set of photos here was shot with, the, uh, with my iPhone X um, just recently. And so I'm just gonna kind of play around with a couple of those images just to show you what kind of controls you have. Now remember, I'm on the iPad, but I shot them on the iPhone. They were on the iPad before I ever even picked up the iPad to, to play around with it. So I'm gonna, you can see that I've already messed with that image. So let's just go to this image because it hasn't been messed with. And I'm going to start adjusting this image. All right, so the first thing I do on the iPad, and I know that this is kind of weird for a professional photographer to say the first thing I do is click auto. But remember, I'm just playing around and sketching with images and I kind of don't want to move a lot of dials um, if I can avoid it. So by clicking on auto first, it immediately gets things in a pretty decent range. It's really quite good. And the reason the auto is so good is that the auto um, inside of Lightroom on your iPad is actually communicating with a, a, a massive computer called Sensei. Um, and it is doing kind of a, a AI interpretation of what needs to happen to your photo. And so you're getting a lot of power out of your auto. And so now I'm gonna take the exposure down just a little bit because I need that mountain not to be quite so bright. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave, I like to bring contrast down a little bit. That helps me to get more um, latitude out of my photos. And then I'm gonna go into the effects. And the effects is where you get clarity and dehaze and texture and vignetting. Um, I'm gonna take clarity up because that really gives a little bit more contrast in the midtones. And then landscape photographs, the texture is a really great place to start. So I like to pull the texture up quite a bit in a landscape photo. And so now you can see that I'm getting some nice texture out of those cliffs there. Um, and now I think I like what I'm getting, except I, I got to play with the color just a little bit. So I'm going to take the temperature up a little, actually let's take the temperature down because I want those skies to be much more blue and we'll deal with the, the warmth issue later on the mountain itself. I'm gonna take the vibrance up because that tends to push up the blues, although it kind of protects the warms and the skin tones and, the, and those rocks actually. And so I, I like everything I'm getting here. Um, I could go then into right up here at the top of the color area is a black and white option or a little color wheel. So if I click on that color wheel, then I get to mix all of my uh, color information here. So I can either use uh, oranges, I can play with yellows. So in this case, I don't know exactly what the colors of those rocks are. I think I would call them orange, but they might have a little yellow in them. So I'm gonna click on this little target right next to the color mix. And once I've clicked on that target, I'm gonna click on the actual See that? It tells me what color it is. It's actually red and orange. And if I grab onto red and orange and I increase or decrease my, if I go up and down, it's moving the hue. Now I don't want to move the hue, so I'm going to undo that and I'm gonna go to the saturation. Actually, let's go to luminance. I'm actually bring this luminance down just a little bit. So it's a little darker and I'm gonna bring the saturation up just a little bit. So see how I can target very specific colors. Now, that's a global adjustment. So anything that is orange and red is gonna kind of increase in its saturation, decrease in its luminance, um, but it's gonna help out the overall picture. Now, what I can do after that is I can go in and target very specific areas. So I can go in with my um, targeted adjustments. So now instead of using these global adjustments up here, I'm actually going to come down here to where this little circle is and I'm going to click on it. And now over on the top left hand corner, there's a plus button. And I can either choose to do a, a gradient, a radial gradient, or I can paint something. 
And right now we're gonna do a gradient because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a gradient across the sky. And I'm gonna, see how I did it at an angle? I can shift the angle like this, but I did it at an angle because it's brighter over there on the left-hand side. And I'm just gonna take the entire exposure of the sky down just a little bit. So you see how I can play with that exposure. And then I'm going to go and make another gradient and I'm gonna drive up just so that I, I, I think that those trees in the foreground are a little too bright. So I'm gonna darken those down and I'm just gonna keep raising this up until I've got a nice shadow look there on the foreground. Okay, so now once I've done that, I can click on that and add another, and this is a brush, and I have my brush settings over here on the left-hand side. I can increase the size of the brush. I can change how uh, sharp or feathered the edge of that brush is, and I can change how, uh, what the flow of that brush is. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm actually gonna choose before I paint what it's gonna look like. So I want the, the, the blacks to go down a little bit, but notice when I let go, it goes back to normal. So I, the blacks are gonna go down a little bit, the highlights are gonna go up a little bit, and then I'm gonna go into the color area, and this is really cool, and you won't be able to see it until I start playing with it. So I'll actually deal with that later, but I'm gonna take the temperature up just a little bit. Okay, so with all of those changes, now when I paint, anything that I paint in is gonna have those changes on them. So now you can see that those changes have been made, but I can also come in after the fact and play. See how I'm, I can increase or decrease my temperature. And this is kind of a new feature. I can use the hue adjustment on a local area, which is awesome because I can change things. See that? I can change it to green. I can change it to, I, I, I can really play around with it. If I double click it, it takes it back to normal. What I need to do is I need the fine adjustment tool. So I'm gonna go in and click on use fine adjustments and then I'm gonna adjust it and it adjusts it less rapidly until I like exactly the color that that mountain is. And I think it's still a little too, need it to be. There we go, that's not good. That's good right there. Okay, so I have been able to do some pretty hefty work on this photograph. And remember, it was a raw photograph that was taken while I was at dinner looking out. So we, my wife and I were at dinner with some friends and we were looking out on this balcony and this is what we saw. And I didn't take my camera with me because we're out to dinner, but I really loved the shot and I really loved what I was seeing. So I took a photograph with my, DNG raw camera inside of Lightroom so that I could edit it later or I could edit it at the time. And typically I don't spend time editing photos right after I take them. I usually wait a little while. Plus I was having dinner with my wife, so it was better not to play around on my phone. Okay, so I can play around with photos on my iPad, on my phone, or on my computer that I, was ta that I took with my um, camera on my phone. But I also have the ability to play around with photos that I took um, here on a camera. So this is a, a photo that was taken with my Canon camera. Um, I was in Hawaii and I was looking at this really kind of misty uh, looking day. Um, but I wanted to have it even more misty, so I put it on a tripod, I drug the sh shutter so that I had, you know, that kind of uh, movement and it made it a little bit more misty. And so I want to work on this. So again, I'm going to click on auto and that kind of richens it up and gets it ready for me. And then I'm going to go in and play around with the exposure a little bit. I'm going to bring the, the shadows down a little bit more. And now what I wanna do is I wanna go in and play with, how's our time? We got, we got 15 more minutes, is that right? Yep, 15 minutes. Okay, so I wanna play around with this, but I want to do something quickly with it and make it a more interesting photograph 
Um, I don't just want it to be a green tree. I kind of want it to be a black and white kind of look. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my presets. First, let's, let's crop this thing. So I went to the crop. So I go to the crop area and I'm just going to kind of play around with the crop until it's actually correct. Or I can click on the straighten button and it'll do it automatically. It'll find that horizon and straighten it up. So now I know that we're straight and I'm going to click out of there and I'm going to go into the preset area. And here is where I'm going to choose a preset. So I can choose one of the presets that's already inside of Lightroom, or I can choose presets that I've made. Now, if you've adjusted anything, so if you've done any adjustments to your photograph, you can all always go up to the, the three dots on the right hand corner and you can say create a preset. And then once you do that right here is where you choose what's going to be in that preset, what the name of the preset is and what group it's going to be in. So you can, you can create your own presets directly here inside of your phone or in, on your iPad um, or back in Lightroom on your desktop. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a preset here. And so I, I'm going to go into my black and white collection and I'm going to scan through the black and white collection and look for, and the great thing is that shows me what those things are going to look like before I even click them. I'm looking at the actual photo itself and those are great, right? I've got, okay, I'm going to click on this one there. Instantly, I like the photograph. That's a great preset to use. However, there are some other things that you can use rather than presets. So presets basically slide sliders all over the place. That's what they do. Um, the other thing that you can do instead of a preset is you can go back to your original image, back into the adjustments area, and you can click on profile. So if you click on the browser for profile, which is right above all the main settings, then you can choose the actual underlying information. So a profile is different from a preset. Preset slides sliders. Profiles actually change the underlying information in the photograph before the sliders ever do anything. So it's like a preset underneath all of your other presets. It's really a great place to be. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and choose a preset. So I have some black and white pro pre, uh, not presets, profiles. I click on those I get to see exactly what they're going to look like and I have a classic tone cool tone version here when I click on it it's it's just much more subtle it's much more beautiful because it's a profile profiles have a much more uh, much more capability in creating this beautiful rich uh, subtle uh, maneuver plus unlike presets I can actually take this slider at the bottom and I can increase the effect or I can decrease the effect. So if I go all the way to zero, it's just black and white. But if I take it to, I can just choose how much of that blue uh, thin tone I want to my photograph. And I kind of want it at about maybe 60% of what it was. So that's perfect. I love it. I'm gonna go back out. Now, the question always comes up, how do I get new preset, other than creating a preset up here and saying, uh, other than going into presets and creating a preset and say, create a preset, how do I get presets in to uh, Lightroom? So here, you can, you can see that we have create a preset and we have manage presets where we can go in and turn on and off presets that are already in there. Um, but how do we get the presets in? All right, this is going, if anybody out there is already using Lightroom, um, this is what you need to do. So you need to go into Lightroom for your desktop, not, not Lightroom Classic, Lightroom for your desktop, and you need to go into a photograph. It doesn't matter what photograph you're in, but when you're in that photograph and you're in the adjustments area, you can go into the, um, down at the very bottom is the presets area. Click on presets, and then inside of presets here, I'm going to click on the three dots, and here is where I can import my presets. Anything you import as a preset into Lightroom on, on your desktop is automatically shared to your phone, to your iPad, to any 
version of Lightroom that's out there. So that's how you get the, not any, not Lightroom Classic. Lightroom Classic is a, its own thing. Again, we're not talking about that. So anything that you import here is gonna be put on your iPad and on your iPhone and on your Android device as a preset. Also, if you're in, instead of the preset area, if you go to the, the profile area, which is again, right up at the top, click on that browser and there's a three dot up at the top of that. And if I click on that, I can import pre profiles there as well. So if I import profiles, doesn't matter as long as I import them into Lightroom for my desktop, doesn't matter how many of these devices I have, all of them will end up having my presets and my profiles on them. Now, it's important to note that you also have this, um, when you import presets and profiles, there are two different types of presets and profiles that you'll find out there. And I'm gonna show them to you really quickly. There are some that look like this that say LR template on them. Those are the old style from the old school uh, of presets. And then there are some that have .xmp on them. And .xmp is the new style of presets that is in Lightroom nowadays. So it, it will take both of them. So all you have to do is import those. So just simply click on a folder, an entire folder. When you import, go to the import dialog box, and when you import, uh, so we go here and we go to there and click on import. And when we import, you can either import one just by clicking on it and import it, or you can click on the entire folder and import the entire folder. And it doesn't matter what kind of preset or profile it is, the old or the new, it will import it, it will convert the old to the new, and then you'll have them everywhere you wanna be. So that's really important to know. Um, any questions on that? I know that we're getting close to time. No, we didn't have any questions on that. We did have a question on importing um, from the camera roll. So I don't know if you wanted to tackle that now or wait until you wrap up. Uh, importing from where? Uh, so importing from the camera roll in regards to selecting, so when you're doing it from mobile, will it automatically pull everything from your camera roll or can you select which photos you want to, uh, to pull in? That's a good question. So when you're importing, there are several ways to import. If you click on this import and you say from all photos, it's just going to give you a list of photos that are in your device and you can just simply select them. So you, you would just say, I want that one, I want this one, I want that one, I want this one. So that's the first way. The second way is from your camera roll and you're going to click on it and there's your camera roll and you can again select the ones you want. Now, there is a way to auto import. So if you choose a specific folder here, new photos, notice that these photos are already in here. Why? Because I took them on my phone and because I told on my phone, I said, I want any photo here that's, that's in this, uh, that I take with my camera roll, it says auto add from camera roll. Now this one's not on because I, I, this folder was, I turned on that option on my phone and so it automatically, anything I shoot automatically goes to that folder. So you can, you can automatically add every photo you shoot to a particular album by simply clicking on the album on its dot, dot, dots and saying auto add from camera roll. So in, it won't auto add everything before you turn it on. It'll just, anything you shoot from here on out will automatically go in. Now, does that so change, that, Jared, if you're using the, the camera within the Lightroom mobile app? Is that a separate setting, or will, does that treat it just like a camera roll photo? The, the camera app itself tends to want to put everything in the latest photos taken. Um, but it's interesting because sometimes 
in, in this instance, it added it, but if you do, once in a while you'll find that it won't add it, and I think it has to do with the fact that you have to, I think it's a, a bit of a glitch. But anything I take with the normal camera will automatically be added to that folder because it's an auto add feature. Um, but occasionally you'll find that your camera doesn't auto add to a folder and it's probably because you just need to turn on the auto add feature, then shut down the, the Lightroom and then turn it back on and then it seems to work. Um, I, I think it's a little bit of a glitch where it doesn't auto add always, but you saw that it did it here and so it's working. It's just, so the, the camera inside of Lightroom is also treated as a camera. But occasionally, if you find that it's not working, the best thing to do is turn on that feature, then shut Lightroom down, turn it back on, and then it, sh it should actually work. So all, all photos that are taken with your camera should end up in that auto add folder. If it's not, you can always go back out and you can go to recent added, recently added photos, and it'll be right there. And then all you have to do is click on the, the three dots on the top right hand corner, hit select, select those two images, and then you can tell it to add those two images, and you can tell it where you want to add it. So you can add it to that particular album that you wanna add it to, click add. So there are a lot of ways that you can actually add photographs to any particular um, folder that you want to be in, um, any, any album that you want them to be in. So the, the ecosystem is fantastic for communicating back and forth, but also the controls that you have on the photographs themselves are fantastically perfect. Um, I love them absolutely to death. Now, in this case, I might want to do something a little bit extra to this photograph, like for instance, I don't like any of these uh, the bushes over here. The problem is, is that Lightroom isn't very good at getting rid of entire chunks of information like that. And so instead of using Lightroom, I'm going to use the share option. Now the share option is great when you're finished with a photograph. Not only can you share it to something like Instagram, uh, you can share it to your friends, you can share it via email. You can also share your edits. Look at this, this little option right here. If I click on share edits, it will literally share to the Adobe community what you did to the photograph. It'll show you adjusting your image. It'll say, he did this, he did this, he did that, he did that, 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 that. This is how he made the photo. It's really quite cool. Um, it's a fun way to share with people what you've been doing. So that's an option as well. Um, you can also export as which means that you get to choose all the details. I want to export a 16-bit ProPhoto RGB JPEG, or I want it to be a PSD or a TIFF or whatever. You can export those options so that you know exactly what you're sending out. Or we can edit in Photoshop. So in this case, it's editing a smart preview because the original RAW was put into Lightroom Classic. Lightroom Classic sent a smart preview over, um, but that's okay. I'm, I'm editing this and I'm gonna go in and choose to use the, um, the Band-Aid tool and I'm going to increase the size of my brush and I'm just gonna paint this bush. This is my, the offending bush. I don't want that bush in the shot at all. Boom. So Photoshop on your iPad has really great capabilities. When you can't quite get it done inside of Lightroom, you just simply go into Photoshop, work on it here, especially if you're like doing some major retouching on somebody, it's a portrait or something. And then as soon as you're done, you just simply click on this button here to send it back to Lightroom. Now we're back in Lightroom and we have two versions. We have the original version, which has the bushes, and then we have the finished version that no longer has the bushes. And so if you simply have your phone, so if you have your phone and or your iPad, and your camera, or even if you don't have your camera, just those things right there 
allow you to travel independent of all other computers and it is freeing. I can't tell you how liberating it is to be able to walk away from all of the trappings of computers and monitors and all this kind of stuff and just go out and create and then go sit in a coffee shop and edit an image and send it out to your friends or send it out to social media. And then when I'm doing a job, I just add this one little piece, which is this Narbox. Uh, this is the Narbox 2.0. It's the newer version of it. Um, and that allows me to protect all of my images professionally. So I don't need a laptop with me when I travel. The only time I ever take a laptop with me is if I'm doing a major lecture where I actually am teaching people desktop editing of some sort. So it's a fantastic tool set and it's all to do with Lightroom. And should I play the video? Go for it. All right. <clears throat> and you can see that there's so many tools inside of Lightroom that we didn't even have time to cover. Um, but I think you got the basics of it and the importance of the ecosystem and the, the power of the tools that you have at your fingertips inside of Lightroom. Um, if people want to learn more about uh, Lightroom, uh, they, can, they can go to my website. Um, it's at, my website is at jaredplatt.com. Uh, you can also, if you're, if you're looking for some presets, uh, at jaredplatt.com, you can find uh, workflow workshops on Lightroom. You can find uh, like the profile collection that we were just using. Uh, that's in there as well. And I also set up a, a, a discount code so everybody who wants to go there can go. Um, and it is 50% off. It's just BH event space with no capital letters. You can get 50% off anything on the store. So if you want to go to jaredplatt.com, learn more about Lightroom or have access to some of those presets that we were talking about, they're all available to you there. Um, and if, you're, if you want to contact me, it's very easy to find me just at Jared Platt. No matter where you go, if you just look for Jared Platt, you'll find me. Well, Jared, thank you so much, man. I mean, as much as you covered there and as in depth as we went on some of these things, it's like you just said, barely even scratch the surface on what you can do in either, even if you just take like the mobile. Admittedly, I still, I'm still a dinosaur. I'm still trying to get into Lightroom, uh, you know, the, the classic on my desktop for organizing, but I do use Lightroom mobile daily. I mean, that is, that's what I use for all of my my mobile uploads, every time I Wi-Fi something to my phone, um, it goes through Lightroom Mobile beforehand. So even just on the mobile, it's, it's just incredible to see how far the technology has come to be able in the palm of your hand um, from pretty much anywhere. You know, and one of the things I use it for a lot is, is location scouting. I'm, I am constantly location scouting with it because it's always in my pocket. It takes a very good photograph. Um, and it shows me exactly where it is. So I have the location data. I can, I can find a, a really cool place. I don't have to try and mark it on a map or anything like that. All I have to do is simply go um, to uh, Lightroom, uh, find the photograph that I was interested in. And once I've taken that photograph, um, I just simply say, okay, I, I really like this tree. Where, where did I find it? Well, I just go to the info and I just click on the map and it takes me to a Google map and shows me exactly where I took that photograph. And so uh, I always take photographs with my Lightroom uh, phone or my Lightroom camera on my phone just in location scouting because it's so useful. Yeah, I didn't even know up until 
I went to a I went to an Adobe Photo Walk as part of Photoville, and that's when I learned that about the camera in there. I'm like, I've been using the the mobile app for how long, and I didn't know that there was a camera in there that I can use. So it's definitely definitely useful. Yeah, and and the thing is, is you can get it for free. It's a free app. So there are some. If you if you subscribe to the Adobe um, Photography Service, which by the way I think they've put a link to the to the Adobe website where yeah, you can we it learn all about that. Um, if you subscribe to the service, uh, there's extra bells and whistles inside of of Lightroom that you can use. But you can use Lightroom and the camera for free. So it's a fantastic thing. I mean, if you don't if you don't have it on your camera or on your phone, you have to download it. And if you haven't, if you do have it on your phone, and you haven't played with the camera, go out and play with the camera because it is a great camera. Definitely. I will second everything you said, the software, the camera, it's just super intuitive. And like you said earlier, the ecosystem, it's really about the seamless transition between working at home to where I do most of my work, which is on those subway rides. Um, that's, <laughs> that's when I got a lot of my editing done. Right. So it just makes it super intuitive to go from one device to another without any lag. Everything's right there when you need it. I am a huge fan. Huge fan. I, so there, there are two really awesome companies in the world, Adobe and B&H. And we happen <laughs> to be talking about both, right? Couldn't so. have said it better myself. But Jared... Thank you again, man. Always insightful, always entertaining. Uh, thank you to our sponsor, Adobe. So a huge thank you to Adobe um, and to all of you out there watching, uh, sending in your questions. We obviously do it for you. So without you, there is no us. But that being said, Jared, we'll have to get you on again soon, man. Like I said, always love having you on. Great to be here. Likewise. And for the rest right. of you, we will catch you next time on another rendition of the B&H Virtual Event Space. Everybody have a wonderful afternoon.